So let's talk about contacts. You're one of the best ever in terms of contact, the pancake man himself, you know, <laughs> we know about all that. In past pro, as I engage you, you talked about the hands, yep. right? Now, what, what are you doing with your hands here as I start to press you? How, <laughs> I still got it. A little right? bit. So, as I start to press on you, what are you now doing with the hands? Are you letting the elbows flare out or are you pulling the elbows in? What I'm doing is kind of pulling the elbows in a little bit. I don't, I'm, I don't ever want to be out here blocked. Okay. So Why uh, is that though? Because you, you don't have any power. Okay. When you're here, you try to do a bench press here opposed to doing a bench press here, mm -hmm. you get a lot more power. Right. So I'm here and I kind of like to hit with the, with, the, with the palms of my hands okay. a little bit. And I feel like it gets more power. So I'm here and I'm striking. I got a slight bend in my in my elbows here so as he's approaching me i can i can strike him right here right so so it gives you a little pop and it gives you a little joke like a lot of guys it, it really depends on the rush too going back to those elbows when you let the elbows flare one thing i just noticed right here is your shoulders start to come forward yep. a little bit yep but as you, exactly. Yep, so, so you always you want to roll back. Yep. Yeah. So this this is, a, for me, this is it's so natural. We talked about posture. Yes. You go back to posture, still the shoulders roll back, but my hands are here, right? And that's just a good striking, strong position yes. here where I come in, I can hit you with the heels of my hands a little bit right there. Another thing that I noticed with that position right there is going to help you keep your head out. Yeah. Because if you're now in a position where your elbows are flared open yep. and I make contact into you, you're going to be more prone to come yep, forward. Absolutely. That, that's ac that's but accurate. I'm, but if I'm here and I'm striking, mm -hmm. My natural reaction is to keep my head out, Bingo. right? Yeah. So that's the key. If I'm, if I'm, once I take my set and I got you here and I hit like, and I hit you, if you got your shoulders back, then your natural, your head's yeah. out of the game. What about the run game? Run game. Run game. So run. now let's say it's a cutoff or backside, backside cutoff. So right. let's just say you were the right tackle now, just for the sake of right. uh, angles here. Right. You come in here. Are you letting this elbow get open? No. Or are you torquing it in? I'm torquing it in right here. This is this is where we're kind of, we talked about this before. The I'm torquing sauce. it in, right? Because yeah. one thing you realize when you're inside here and you got that hand, you're so much stronger. Yes, yes. You're so much yeah. stronger. Yeah. You can't, as an offensive lineman, you can't do anything with your hands out here, no. out here. We're, we're tight and we're here. Because we're, right. we're stronger as we work that backside right. block. So you want to get that hand nice and screwed in yep. in terms of pass protection. Yep. You want to get it screwed in in the run game because yep. as you talked about in the approach, you cannot control the yep. opponent that way. Control Out the man. here, you can't I can't control anything. my body, so right. I can't control yours. Absolutely. If you let a man who controls your chest, you know, obviously he can do whatever he wants right. with you. So that's why I think it's imperative, number one, to have tight hands come through. Mm -hmm. And then one, one thing I used to do in college a lot is I, as I'm approaching the guy, I got my hands on him. I used to pull him closer Ooh, to me. Okay. That's how we. That's how we kind of got the pancake, pancake block pancake. a little bit, right towards the end. <laughs> oh, so that's the secret. You no, know, that's a little secret there. Or <laughs> well, if a guy's trying to reach on the block, uh -huh. and as soon as he tries to go make the tackle, finish boom, it. Finish a little it. bit of a push pull little, torque. Absolutely, yeah. What about tight hands? I heard you say the tight hands twice. Now, a lot of young athletes misinterpret the concept tight hands. You know, when you go hands. Some kids are here. Yeah. And if you tell me at 14, 15 years old, tight hands, it means you want me somewhere in there. I can't control you in there, can no, I? No, no. You want to be right on the pecs. On the pecs. Right on the pecs. I'm right here. Mm -hmm. Right here. This so if I I'm come at. this way. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. I got you. Lock either in. way. Either way. So tight hands don't, don't necessarily mean right, right down the right. middle of the chest. Right. And I was always told this. They'll never call holding if your hands are inside. inside. Mm -hmm. If they're out here, they're going to call holding. Right. So I've learned that secret. Not, well, it's not even a secret. It's just the way I've been taught. Tight hands, you control the man, right. and you can go. But the first thing I would say, you got to put yourself in position. Right. I can't do a base block if my footwork isn't right. Correct. If Correct. I don't get that second step down quick enough, i got to be in position if I'm doing a base block to get that second step down, and then I can get tight hands. Mm -hmm. You can't do any of that unless you're not, if you're not in position. And it all goes back to posture. It does. It you does. got to be in a proper stance to get the proper contact in the contact phase. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about the motion? So in the run game, I'm coming off the ball. Am I swinging the arms back and then jabbing them forward? No. How am I taking my hands from the ground to the opponent? If you don't learn anything else on this session, <laughs> it's nothing but 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 uh, no wasted motion. Clean. Whether it's clean, you don't want any wasted motion in your footwork or in your hand. You hear, defensive linemen are so good now, if you cock your hands back, they're straight to your chest. So it's imperative to go straight from your stance up. Boom. So I got a drill here. 
that we're gonna call it the Orlando Pace backside hand. And all the drill is gonna teach Orlando is, is what you did throughout your career, that torque, that tight hand, that torque, that lift, that drive. But it's very difficult to teach. So we take something very simple. It can be a towel, it can be a t-shirt, and all you're gonna do is spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. Get your little device right here, little slingshot. Have your athlete put the hand in there, lock it in. Now the key thing is this, what you don't want to have happen in Lando is you have it on the outside, because if I pull here, now I put the shoulder in a compromised position, that's no bueno. You want to make sure that the slingshot device here is inside the armpit and outside of, outside of the arm. And here, I'm going to give a little bit of resistance, just bring that hand down like you're in your stance, relax, relax, right there, because as you drive, I want you to <clears throat> drive it in there into that opponent's Pack. Here we go on the first one, about 50%. Don't pull me out my shoes. Here we go, set, hit. Perfect. Good. Now let's go to pass. Set your hand on in. Common mistake in the run and pass. After he gets the elbow flared, and as you can see here, you can square yourself up a little bit more. There you go. Elbow flared a little bit. Man, not that much. There you go. What ends up happening is the athlete can't control the hip. But by just simply screwing this shoulder in, and as Orlando said, thinking about pinning that elbow, pinning that armpit, we now create more strength, more stability, and a much better opportunity to keep the head out of contact. And, and the great thing about this drill is you can do it at home, right? Yes. It takes yes. a, you can do a t-shirt on your own. You yeah. can do it or you have a buddy or somebody just hold that towel and you're just working your drill. Yes. Because obviously offensive line, there's so many, so much technique that goes into it, you know, that, that's probably sometimes not coach. You can do some stuff at your home. So that's why I think it's great. This way to play yeah. is a great way to uh, help young offensive linemen, you know, do some technique and work at home. The game is evolving. Uh, we grew up in an era where the helmet was a common coaching cue. So if it's myself and it's a front side reach, you know, get the head across. Or we heard common vernacular being hat and hands. Yep. You know, how important is it in your, for, from your perspective, for us to evolve our coaching language? I, I think so. I think uh, obviously the game has evolved and obviously we're trying to make the game safer. Yeah. And uh, you know, now that we're retired, we kind of see, you know. Big picture. Big, big picture. Yeah. We, can, we can look at it, we're not into it, in it as much. But obviously, there's some concepts that we could use. Because obviously, like you said, if I'm doing a reach block. So I'm gonna be here. And yeah, normally they would say, get your head across. Right. But now, you, you can just change the terminology and say, get your shoulder across. That's it. Yeah. That's the key, right? You wanna coach from here, here down. And you're, and you're accomplishing the same thing. Right. You're just changing you know, the terminology of it, and you can still get your point across, but it, it changes the mindset of the player. Bingo. You know, we're so not- So that's a backside cutoff. Absolutely. Same thing, Same right? thing, I'm just trying to get my shoulder across. Mm -hmm. And what that's happens it. naturally, you kind of create a nice little pillow there between right. the head right. and the hel or the helmet and the opponent's helmet. Absolutely. Because if, if it's me, and I'm coming here and the coach always told me, LB, I want you to take your backside shoulder and rip it across to this opponent's outside yep. shoulder. What I'm gonna now do is I'm gonna drive here and yep. get myself here and I'm gonna have a nice little buffer. Absolutely. As opposed to, LB, I want you to rip the helmet across yep. and now yep. swing it there yep. and now we're colliding. Because that's exactly what we do. Get that's your helmet across. So, all right, well, maybe I'm still trying to get my head, you know. Yeah. But no, let's work We're on this focus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Every athlete is a literal. Yeah, absolutely. In a good way and a bad way. In a good way, way and a bad way, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's that's the key point. Just change the terminology. We have shoulder pads for a reason. Yes. Ripping those shoulder pads, and you're still going to make the block. You're going to be a, if you, if you accomplish what you're going to do, it's just changing the terminology. It's about owning angles and yep. leverage. That's it. And if that's what we're trying to establish. We can get all that we need from here on down. Absolutely. And keep it above the knees. And keep it. Yeah, absolutely. Until we got to be diving at knees.